Hey guys, um, so today we're going to be talking about how to share the gospel with an atheist. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's not. Um, In my experience, the deciding factor is something I'm not going to say because it would be kind of insulting and condescending. But it's totally an atheist intelligence and ability to think for themselves that's getting in your way. But don't tell anyone I said so, it's a secret. Let's do this. Bionic Dances YouTube Channel Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. Every now and then one runs across a how to proselytize to atheist video or some variation on the theme, like this internet randos video here. The problem is, they can never do it right. I've mentioned it before and I'll probably mention it again. Go watch the alt-right playbook on YouTube. It's a great series that gives remarkable insight into the extreme end of the right wing, and it says that one of the mistakes lefties, no, not your dominant hand, make is arguing, debating, or otherwise trying to convince a right winger as if there's someone who really wants to be a lefty, they just don't realize it yet. And that's how Christians tend to talk to atheists. Like, we really want to be Christians, or were once Christians and aren't anymore for some reason, but we just haven't realized it yet. And so they preach at us. They probably think it's to us, but that's sure not how it feels. As if we already believe and already agree with them, and we just need that extra nudge to go all the way. And that's never going to work. So, number one is to know your Bible. And study it deeply. Yes, do that. Study your Bible. Most former Christians say that what convinced them to become atheists was actually reading the Bible instead of just listening to sermons and seeing how loopy it really is. So yes, read your Bible. Except, this is the Bible. This is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And if you didn't know squat about religion and read these books back to back, this would be the more plausible one. So read your Bible. Quickest way to become an atheist. Just study the Bible. Maybe even study the subjects that the atheist is talking about, you know? While that's good advice, it's coming from a bad place. I mean, yes, you can study the Bible to find replies to atheist objections to religion, I suppose. The problem you'll run into is that most atheists don't care about biblical answers. Most of us consider the Bible to be the claim that needs proving and not a source of evidence. Using the Bible to prove the Bible will fall on deaf ears and you'll just be wasting everybody's time. If an atheist says to you, I need proof and evidence of what the Bible says. What they mean is evidence from outside the Bible that corroborates the biblical narrative. If you're really serious about proselytizing to atheists, do not try to use the Bible as anything other than a claim that has yet been unproved and, frankly, in many instances, historical or scientific, thoroughly debunked. Try to, try to know where that person's come from. This sounds great at first. But he's about to drop it straight into the toilet. There's probably a reason that they're not wanting to submit to God. As, I mean, of course, we're all sinners, but and that's the main reason, but... I guess the possibility that we don't even think a God exists in the first place isn't one he's about to consider, and that's the mistake I was talking about earlier in reference to the alt-right playbook, assuming that we're all Christians in our hearts, but we just haven't quite realized it yet. The fact that most atheists aren't prepared to even believe in a magical toga fairy in the sky isn't even part of his thinking, and he's about to make it even worse. Maybe somebody died when they were younger. That uh, led them to believe that, oh, God wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Wow. <sighs> this hoary old chestnut again. Dude, if you go in assuming that atheists are angry at God, they're gonna get angry at you. Hell, you've just described the premise of the movie God's Not Dead, and there is not an atheist alive who has watched that movie and gone, Oh yeah, that sounds just like my story right there. The angry atheist who really believes in God but is just grumpy at him thanks to some life trauma is a myth Christians love to tell themselves. But if you're serious about finding out where someone is coming from, you have to be open to the idea that they truly, genuinely, absolutely, honestly, and sincerely don't believe in any gods, and in some cases, like myself, never have. If that's not going to be part of your thinking, I see no reason whatsoever to talk to you at all because you're just dishonest and biased and it's a waste of both our time. Number two is love. It's love. 
have a verse on my phone. I'm gonna open it up real quick. Did he just start talking in tongues? I have a verse on my phone. I'm gonna open it up real quick. So love is basically the driving factor, at least in the cases that I've been in. And of course, Jesus is the, the real driving factor, but he, he's going to use love as a main source, at least in my cases he has. Here's a verse, 1 Peter 4, 8. Do not quote the Bible at atheists. Seriously, you might think the Bible is the best book ever, and these verses may move you to tears, but... Well, you know when someone puts on music you really can't stand? My usual go-to is country, but by your accent, I think that's not the right one today. Opera. Someone puts on opera. Well, that dislike of what is basically yodeling for snooty people is pretty close to how I feel when a theist quotes scripture at me. Same for when they say that the Bible says blah blah blah. If you're serious about talking to atheists and not just at atheists, understand that reading verses at us is one of the worst possible ways to go about it. I said it before, I'll say it again. We need evidence from outside the Bible that corroborates its claims. Unless you're quoting scripture in order to tell us what you're about to corroborate, you're wasting everybody's time. Besides, most atheists have probably already heard it quoted at them many times before and it didn't change our minds then either. After I say God gave me that love that, that I didn't know until he gave it to me how it felt, but try to use, like, God's gonna try, like, use the love that God's given you as method of loving him. If all you're going to do is this random and undefined loving them with the love that God allegedly gave you, but you keep it to yourself, go ahead. But if you start trying to tell us about it, you'll run into those two deadly words. Prove it. Because you can tell us about God's love all day. But until you can show us the actual God, or at least give us a way to detect that God using machinery of some sort, until you can make faith unnecessary, telling us about God's love is like telling us about the Loch Ness Monster. Sure, it sounds neat and all, but I'm gonna have to see some scales or droppings first and then have them tested in a lab. See, the problem is that, as your video is titled, you want to share the gospel with atheists. Well, atheists don't want the gospel. We want facts. Hard data. Testable lab samples. We want you to take the guesswork and the wishful thinking out of the equation by replacing it with physical artifacts we can examine. But not only do believers never provide this kind of scientific data, they don't even seem to understand why we harp on it so hard. You seem to want to convert atheists without having to talk our language. Why do you think that'll ever work, even if it worked on you? Number three, speed factual. Or maybe you do want to speak our language. Let's see where he goes with this. A lot of atheists are like science-based, you know what I mean? Like evolution and all that stuff. Don't just say, and all that stuff. If you want to make an atheist lose all respect for you, refer to them as an evolutionist. Or don't bother making a distinction between evolution, abiogenesis, and the Big Bang. Or refer to microevolution and macroevolution as if they're separate, rather than macroevolution just being lots and lots and lots of microevolution over a long period of time. Seriously, learn the terms, what they mean, why they're important, and why they're not all evolution. Now, I don't know whether you even want the respect of atheists, but if you want us to listen to you, it's a good thing to have. If you try to take what a preacher says about science to an atheist, I sure do hope you like being laughed at. Maybe, I think they found the Noah's Ark or something. They found something, and uh, maybe you use that. I don't know. I'm not. Don't take my word for that. Oh no, no, my friend. You don't get to say something like that and then just keep going about your day. Doing a simple Google search for any news-related articles regarding Noah's Ark being found, the only websites that couldn't be summed up with the words "Don't be a schmuck" were also the ones claiming aliens built the pyramids. So I'd stop talking about Noah's Ark like that if you still want to be taken seriously. God can probably show you some stuff that uh, has happened in science, or in uh, in fact, in like their view of factual. Like Am I the only one who thinks he's sometimes not speaking English? Even when I'm stoned, I'm not that mush-mouthed. Sheesh. But here's the thing. 
even if a god exists, and if that god shows me something, unless he, she, it, or they does it in person, I'm not going to believe it was anything other than my own idea or someone else messing with me. That's the part people trying to share the gospel don't get. If God isn't real, everything, all of it, your whole religion is bullshit, meaningless. But you're treating God's existence as a given, as axiomatic, and you're so-called sharing your gospel on that basis with people who don't believe it yet. Does that seem like the right way to go, really? That's like trying to get me to buy a car I haven't test-driven, or can't even know is yours to sell, or even real in the first place. Would you buy an invisible car that has no deed and which you've never touched? Would you? I wouldn't. Step one, and I mean the very first thing you should do after introducing yourself, is prove God is real. If you can't or won't do that, but you want to keep preaching anyway, you're wasting everybody's time. There is no reason to learn about the Bible until its author starts doing signings at the last remaining bookstore that isn't online yet. And think about it. Non-belief is an unforgivable sin, but proof is the one thing we're not allowed to have. How does that not sound fishy to you? Because I hear that and I don't think, Ah, yes, an all-loving God. I think, Ah, yes, scummy earthlings exploiting other people's fears for money and power. Seriously, which is more likely, Captain Magicbeard up in the clouds or humans running a scam? I'll give you two tries to get that right. <clears throat> Number four is the most important one. Um, it's really hard to, to take back. It's... You can't save them. You cannot save them. Jesus can. not So stop trying to put all the effort in you saying the right thing and just love them and talk to them and let Jesus take over. No, you're going to have to say the right thing. You're going to have to show us the right data. You're going to have to help us run the experiments. Why? Because, like I said, if your God isn't real, your religion is just some very well-organized make-believe. You guys have taken LARPing to the next level, I must say. But if you're waiting on some magical revelation to happen, it won't. Not for the kind of rational, skeptical empiricists I hang with. And I've been debunking religion for a long, long time. Believe me, I've encountered my fair share of atheists. I'm not just talking out of my butt. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You are God's PR team. You're his salesman selling me his religion. And your sales pitch is terrible. You're supposed to be convincing me that Christianity is something I want, and you can't even show me it's not bullcrap. You won't even try because you think Jesus will do some nebulous something to me. Atheists aren't like that. Atheists aren't like you, and the more you try to gospel at us as if we're Christians already, the harder you'll fail. Yeah, just, just comment. And also, like, if I ever say anything wrong in these videos, tell me. Like, tell me straight up, like, because... I need people to hold me accountable. Like I don't want I don't want to lead people astray, you know what I mean? Just remember you said that, tie dye Timmy, because I've obviously held you to it. The fact is that Christians don't seem to care whether their message lands or is even relevant to their audience at all. They just seem to want to be the loudest voice in the room. And why do I even do this? Why do I give advice to people who proselytize when I don't particularly want to be religious? Well, like I said, I've been at this a long time, and it's been even longer than that since I've heard a new argument from a Christian. And because if any religious religion is true, I want to know it, even if I find it unpleasant. And so, as a spur to get them to shake things up a little and present us with new reasons their religion isn't a steaming pant load, I explain just what they're doing wrong. Okay, so before I go, I need to talk about the state of the channel, because uh, there's something that's been coming for a good long time, uh, but it's not here yet, and I want input from my viewers. You see, you may have noticed that in the last while, my input, or sorry, my video output has been a lot lower than it used to be. And part of that is just lockdown fatigue, you know? Uh, I'm home alone with my cats, like, almost all the time, you know? And, like, like the longest conversations I'm having are with cashiers right now. 
uh, in-person conversations, I mean, and, and that'll get to a person after a while. I really want this stupid disease to end. It'd be nice. But also, uh, I mean, like I said in the video, I've been doing atheism on YouTube for a good long time, uh, more than 12 years. And when I first started, it was to show off my animation work. And uh, obviously I've fallen away from that, but I, I, I kind of miss it. And I haven't seen a new argument from a Christian in a very long time. And you know how you're always hearing about, or maybe you're not, I don't know, I read about it a lot uh, in various books and things about, you, you get that military person who's like, yep, I put in my 20 years and now I can retire with a pension. Well, I haven't been doing this 20 years, YouTube hasn't existed that long, but uh, I, I've been at it a long time and I feel like I've put in my time. And uh, truth is, for a couple of years now, I've been wanting to switch my channel back to my true passion, which is storytelling through animation. But I haven't had a job that wasn't YouTube in as long as I've been doing YouTube. Part of that was just because it was hard to find one. And then part of that was this started to actually pay livable money. Um, but it's all through donations. I mean, I don't make anything off of YouTube itself. If I get a hundred bucks a month, it's extraordinary. But off of Patreon, I get plenty to live on. And if I switch topics, I don't know how many of you I'm, I'm going to lose. And so I've been, well, kind of avoiding it for a while, just because, uh, well, I, I felt a little trapped, I guess. But now that I've got this big project going, and it, it's going pretty well, some of my best animation work ever, I, I kind of want to switch out. You know, I, 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 there's a whole new crop of atheists out there, and they're all, well, most really good people worth watching. You know what I'm saying. Um, in fact, you know who you are. But the, the point being that, that I'm awfully close to, to throwing in the towel on that. It's, it's time to pass the torch, you know what I mean? So, if you're one of my patrons, um, well, let me know if, if you'd stick around if I started telling stories with animation or, or doing little comedy sketches with animation or something. I don't know. Just, I want some input, you know, because if, if my livelihood is at stake, then, well, I guess I'll keep going till I build up more of a nest egg. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Everything these days is so uncertain. Well, whatever. Uh, I've talked long enough and this is unscripted, so I'm, I'm just gonna yeah, until next time, fellow space travelers, ha have fun and, you know, think and shit. Hey, this is a nice computer you got over here. Be a shame you didn't subscribe to Bionic Dance. I'd hate for something bad to happen to it.